So this module is bookkeeping to trial balance. Yes. Module one, introduction to accounting. This is ICB module one. Yes. Introductory concepts. What is financial accounting all about? Financial accounting is about reporting on the flow of money in an organization. And we report to two types of people. We report to people inside the organization. So some of the financial uh, information that we prepare and give to people are for managers and some are for uh, shareholders and other role players, people outside the organization. But when we talk about the financial accounting per se, it is historical information and that historical information it has to be presented in a specific format and uh, it's really more for people outside the organization because by the time we get it um, it's almost too late for people in the business to make uh, uh, a decision based on it but we also use it to do to, to extract information for management so that they can make uh, in real time decisions so there are two functions when we talk about keeping the books, uh, about financial accounting, it's about keeping the books and drafting the reports. Now, mm -hmm. for our purposes, for the ICB purposes, when we talk about keeping the books, that's bookkeeping, it's done on a monthly basis and everything that we do in bookkeeping to trial balance speaks to this thing function, keeping the books. Mm -hmm. Then the second part of accounting is the drafting of the reports. That is done once a year annually, and yes. that we are not doing in bookkeeping to trial balance. We are doing that in financial statements at a later stage once you've passed bookkeeping to trial balance. Yes. So what do we do on a monthly basis? We collect source documents for all transactions. Yes. Then we summarize those source documents in journals. Yes. Then we summarize it even further in the ledger accounts. Okay. Yes. That, yes. Then we do the recons because um, there's also info, always information that we get only at the end of the month, and that is why we have to do the recons. We send out statements and we draft the trial balance, and that is done on a monthly basis. Yes. Great. Once a year. We draft an income statement, we draft the balance sheet, and at the annual general meeting, management explains all of this to the stakeholders. Obviously, they want the stakeholders to invest more money, and the stakeholders want a bigger return on the investment. So this is what's happening on a monthly basis here on the left, and that is what we are going to focus on in mm. this course. Yes, okay. Some short definitions. Now, the only reason I've given you these short definitions is mm -hmm. because these short definitions are the one that often comes up in your assignment or in your um, in your tests. So, old Luca Pakiholi, he is known as the father of accounting. He was a priest, and uh, he was worried about the fact that some of the money for grain that was paid seemed mm. to go missing. It seems like even back then you couldn't necessarily trust anybody, even if they were clergy. And so he designed this double accounting system and uh, we are still using it till this day. And I think that uh, could be 500 years ago. Mm. IFRS is the International Financial Reporting Standards. Now in South Africa, we do not use IFRS per se, we use GARP. Now, GARP is generally accepted accounting practices, but those general accepting accounting processes are in line with the international financial reporting services standards. And so if uh, you qualify as a bookkeeper or an accountant in South Africa, the same principles is used internationally, and so you will be able to go and work for an international employer really anywhere as well. Then there's a, a, a principle there. That principle there is called relevance. Now, relevance means, does the information that I give you matter? 
Okay, because if I give you information that's five years old, it doesn't really matter anymore. It's too old to make any good decisions on, upon. So if for, if for information to be relevant, it must be both material. So in other words, serious. It's not just um, unimportant stuff that I suck out of my thumb to keep uh, the management busy. So it yeah. must be important material and it must be timely. Um, so, you know, if it's that's why we draft the financial statements on a yearly basis so that at least the shareholders about six months after year end, at least mm -hmm. can see what happened in the company. Yeah. Now, the next couple of lines, there are on different forms of ownership. So the first, the most common or not the most common SSD, but the 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 first type of ownership is when somebody decides, you know what, whatever I'm doing at work, I'm now going to do it for myself. And uh, they don't register a business per se, they just start doing it. And uh, that is called a sole proprietorship. Yes. And when you're working with a sole proprietorship, the owner is the one that must take on all the risk. So if you are running a, your business as a sole proprietorship and you have a lot of debt, then um, the sheriff the court is going to come to your house. He's going to sell your TV yes. to pay your debt. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's not that quick. Although sometimes with these exercises, we make it look as if it is that quick. It's really not that quick. No. Then we have a partnership. Now, a partnership, there's two or me, more equal business owners, but much like a sole proprietorship, Dan, it's, it's not really a separate business entity. A partnership is exactly what it says. It's individuals, sole proprietors, under normal circumstances, that's now working together. And so we have two or more business owners, but there's no protection yet for the business. Then we get different types of companies. And I've given you three different types of companies there. When you have a company, the company, uh, the owners are protected. So it means if the company goes into debt, they're not going to come after the owners, unless, of course, the owners are also directors and they were really, really reckless. And mm -hmm. they're not talking about negligent. They're not talking about going uh, bankrupt and having to liquidate, that's normal business, that happens. But if you are really reckless, so for instance, you know that the business is doing bad, but you decide to still give yourself an enormous bonus, then they are going to say, yeah, that's, that sounds a little reckless. I don't know mm -hmm. if we can allow that. And then they all might come after you. So a non-profit company exists for the benefit of the comp of the public. So the, um, there's still shares and everything like in a normal company, but mm. there's just no profit. That doesn't mean that the non-profit cannot retain income. We mm. just say retained income. The profits cannot be split among the owners because um, the owners really of the, the non-profit company they will take only a salary like like anybody else. Then you have a private company. A private company, the, the, the owners own shares in it. If the company go, does well, it can declare a dividend and the money can be distributed between the owners. Mm. And uh, But the shares are not traded on the stock exchange. Okay. And then, of course, we get public companies. It's not in there, but we get public companies and public companies is are those that uh, rate their shares on the stock exchange. Yeah. So anybody can really buy their shares and um, if and and then as the share value goes up, your potential income gets more and you really only get money when you sell the shares. Mm -hmm. Or once again, if the company declares a dividend, they might declare a dividend, divide this dividend among all the shares that that's available in the company, and then all the shareholders will receive a sum of money. Yes. Companies, for companies, the owners are called the shareholders. Then we have, historically, we had closed corporations. Now, we don't, you can't start a new closed corporation, but you can still buy an old one. The idea is that in time, all closed corporations will become com com companies. Um, that's been the ideal for more than a decade now, so who knows when it's going to happen. But if you are a owner in a closed corporation, you are not called a shareholder, you are called a member. 
Okay. And then, of course, the other thing that we have um, is a trust. Now, we don't work with trust in this course, yes. but um, anybody can start a trust, mm -hmm. and the people who start the trust are the founders, and the trust will be to the benefit of somebody, and that is the trust beneficiaries. Now, sometimes the trust founders and the trust beneficiaries are the same people. That's when it runs like a business. But of course, not if it's a testamentary trust. Then the the founder is in the grave and the beneficiary is the people to whom he or she left their money.